Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So Ethereum is still holding here above the support area. There has really literally be, been no movement yesterday. Um, I'm actually quite happy when on the weekend there isn't too much movement. It allows me to focus on a few altcoins. I made a focused on um, Filecoin in one of my last videos yesterday, you know, and um, cover some requests that uh, that channel members typically have. So what we want to take a look at is just a little bit um, having a chat about the indicators here, having a chat about the, um, the actual pattern we're in at the moment, because it seems to be that we are really running in this sort of triangle that I talked about already on Friday, that we might get a bit of a triangle shape here. Um, even, even if it is possibly not an Elliott wave triangle, it's um, it's still a, some kind of a triangle shape that we are operating in, which you can see very clearly by just looking here at the descending trend line. You've got four touch points, very, very relevant. We can try to draw them very accurately here. Um, sometimes I get the questions, that, you know, sometimes when prices don't really move, I try to combine it with a little bit of education. Sometimes people ask me, you know, do you use, do you use uh, the wicks when you draw a trend line or not? I would always try to use the wicks but the reality is when you draw an actual trend line let's forget Elliott wave in a minute but when you draw an actual trend line anywhere it is in reality usually messy now you'll find a lot of educational videos that tell you you use either the wicks only or you use the candlestick but it's very important that you don't cut through a candlestick body now i found that absolutely not practical yeah in reality, trend lines are subjective and trend lines are um, going to be messy. Now, they are going to be messy. It could very well be, you know, if you have, let's say, um, just let's make something up. Let's say you have 10, you have 10 touch points, yeah, and one body cuts through. Would you not use the trend line? No, absolutely not. So if you have a very, very accurate trend line and really, it really sticks out, then by all means, just draw it. Um, it can only be a guide anyway. Yeah, I would I would always use try to use the wicks as well. Um, but in reality, if one candlestick briefly cuts through, and it seems to still be a relevant trend line, then by all means means you use it. Um, there are different rules when you look at Elliott wave and drawing trend lines. For example, for channeling, or for drawing trend lines for um, Elliott wave triangles to calculate the target after the breakout. That's different, um, but um, yeah, there's, there's, they are quite objective because they are clear rules. And that's why I like the Elliott Wave method because it gives you really clear rules and guidelines to follow. Yeah? And uh, that's why typically, yes, you can have different opinions about an Elliott Wave count, but you should always be able to discuss with another Elliott Wave analyst very uh, respectfully and by following the rules the different scenarios that are available because really there shouldn't really be much discussion other than okay I prefer this count or I prefer that count because rules and guidelines are clear and as long as nobody's breaking the rules and guidelines all counts are valid and then it's about identifying which count does adhere best to the rules and guidelines outlined in the Elliott Wave method right so there are certain rules and guidelines um, Rules obviously shouldn't be broken and guidelines can be broken, but should at least be um, considered when coming up with an Elliott Wave count. Now, this is starting to become a very, very nice triangle here. And if we try to identify here um, a triangle count, Elliott Wave count, yeah, then this would be an A wave. This would be a B wave. I would say this here is a C wave. I would say this is a D wave and this is an E wave. I mean, if one forecast on the weekend was correct on Friday, then it was that this is going to be sideways and that we are having a triangle, right? And we have one. Um, not too much surprise. I mean, you can be quite confident that typically when you're heading into an area where you might have a wave four and this is a wave four, but it would then be end here. If you have a triangle, an Elliott wave triangle, and it becomes more and more like a triangle here, also like an Elliott wave triangle, yeah? Um, then um, yeah, you can be, let's say, 80% certain that it's going to turn into an, some kind of a triangle, Elliott wave triangle, when you have a wave four um, and you see corrective movement down, you see corrective movement up, corrective movement down, corrective movement up, right? Um, yeah, so 
makes um, makes sense in my view. I'm still a bit um, yeah, I'm I'm unsure about this wick here. In the end, it doesn't make a great difference. Um, let's leave it like that for now. But point is here that after this E wave, we have a chance to break out to the upside. What would be target? So we can also measure the target as per the Elliott wave method. What we do, we extend the BD trend line as well as the CA trend line. By the way, if we do that, then the E wave is already outside of the triangle. That typically happens towards the end of the triangle. As long as the E wave does not break below the C wave, this is valid and a break out of the C E line is actually an indicator that this trend line or this triangle is coming to an end. Now we won't really know of course until we get the breakout first above above the D wave line or not the D wave line, the actual D wave. So that would be at 1709. Yeah, that would be an indication that this is breaking to the upside as anticipated and a confirmation that this triangle is breaking you will get above um, 1723 above the B wave high. So measuring target, you extend those lines and you actually go very much to the beginning um, of this triangle. And the question is here, do we take the, do we consider this or this? I would use the complete, absolutely beginning and we're measuring just the height of the lines or the distance, yeah, the thrust of the triangle. And we go to the end of the E-wave and then you get a target which would be around 1800, which is actually my target anyway that we talked about. So let's see. Um, what I cannot promise you is that this triangle is indeed over. I can in fact not not promise you that this is an Elliott wave triangle. What annoys me is this wick here, but certainly um, you can count it as an Elliott wave triangle. I'm sure there are other ways of counting it from an Elliott wave point of view, but um, this is sort of what we could go with as long as we're now holding above the C wave low, so above 1681, 1680, we can go with this and would anticipate here or at least be ready. Yeah, we need to be ready for a breakout to the upside. Now, I'm not telling you this will definitely happen, but you have a complete count here. We are in the apex. Typically, when a triangle is heading into the apex, be prepared for a breakout. When you connect the CE lines, you would typically um, at the end of a triangle see the, or you can actually see the E wave briefly break out to the wrong side and it would then follow through to the upside. Let's see if that actually happens. It would be a textbook triangle. If, however, we break below that 1681 level, so if we break below the C wave low, it could mean that we have an extension of the triangle. Yeah, I mean, I can't, these triangles can always extend out and one mistake that many analysts make, they they call a triangle finished too early. Now, as per Elliott wave, again, there are clear rules and guidelines. We have an indication that the triangle is breaking if we break above the D wave, yeah? And we have a confirmation if we break above the B wave. Until then, things are still rather unclear and in the making as this story is being written. So be aware of that, highly interesting. I uh, wanted to take a quick look at the indicators and what I wanted to highlight to you is just that um, on the daily, I mentioned it yesterday, we had a bullish crossover and a bullish crossover on the RSI and the MACD and we're not overbought on the RSI, indicating further upside is certainly still on the table and is certainly still possible. Yeah, and also what we can see here is that volume is reducing and that typically happens towards the end of a triangle. When you now see that volume is getting a spike after a low, it could indicate this triangle is breaking out. So it will be interesting. I mean, maybe we are going to move a little bit longer today until we have get closer to the weekly candle close and then see a breakout to the upside. Okay, and that's my update about Ethereum. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.